now we have the movie catalog service get a circuit breaker it's like hey now i've got a circuit breaker now what do i do when a request comes in what do i do in the case of an electrical circuit it's fairly simple you just disconnect the circuit for that thing so power is out for a certain portion of the of the of the circuit but this is a microservice there's a request coming in and the person who's making the request expects you to do the job right somebody comes and says hey give me movie info how can you have a microservice says nope i'm not doing that that's not gonna work right so you need to have a mechanism for any microservice that has a circuit breaker to do something when it cannot do what is asked of it, right? So somebody comes and says, hey, make a call to that service. The microservice knows that that service is not functioning. You don't want to be making a call. So what do you do? It has to do something else. It has to send back something. If it doesn't send back something and if it's waiting, we have the same problem, right? It's consuming a thread. So you have to send back something without calling the problem microservice. What do you do? So let's take a look at this. Let's say I have a web server. We have a uh, request coming in. Actually, let's do this. Before we talk about what to do when a circuit breaks, let's talk about when a circuit should break, right? Every circuit breaking needs to be triggered by something, right? In the case of an electrical circuit, it's triggered by a surge, it's triggered by some variance in the uh, in the amount of power that a particular component is getting right so there is a limit that's set and uh, somebody who's made the circuit breaker has said okay when it spikes when it crosses a particular limit break the circuit right so this is a parameter that's set what is a parameter for a microservice right let's examine that so let's say you've got this web service and a web server and your request comes in and uh, that request is successful this is a request for one microservice, say, right? All these requests that I'm drawing over here is going to one microservice. The first request is successful. The second request times out. Now, what do you do? You just break the circuit? You just say, okay, you timed out. I'm not sending you requests anymore. Can you do that? That's a bit harsh because timeouts can happen. And uh, just because one single timeout happened, it's not like the circuit is, you know, that microservice is like, it's not gonna get any calls because that would result in other problems, right? You don't wanna be having a single fault be a trigger for, uh, you know, a circuit to break in the case of microservices. In that case, what would be the trigger? At what point would you say, enough is enough. I'm sending you too many requests. You're not responding back on time. This is uh, this is not cool, man. Life is short. You're taking too much time. I'm not going to send you requests anymore, right? So there is a certain point where the calling microservice has to say that. What is that point? All right. So let's uh, let's examine this. Let's uh, let's draw a couple more a uh, couple more requests, right? So the first request succeeded. Second one timed out. Third request succeeded. Fourth request errored out. Fifth request timed out. Sixth request timed out. All right. So I might say, okay, well, let's say the last three requests timed out. So in this case, the the success happened, then error, timeout, timeout. You can say, okay, now enough is enough. At any point of time, if the last three requests time out, I'm going to break the circuit, right? That's one way of doing this. But that's also not very valid because let's say you have alternate successes and failures. Right? One success, one failure, one success, one failure. You're never going to break the circuit if you have that logic. So what I'm trying to say is the logic that you need to set for what is the trigger for the circuit to break that needs to be smart enough to accommodate a bunch of use cases. It needs to be smart enough to accommodate, okay, what if it's intermittent? What if um, it's mostly successful, just a few timeouts interspersed? So you need to know what are the parameters for your circuit to break, all right? So there are a bunch of parameters that you can set. Um, I'm gonna quickly go over them. Here are some circuit breaker parameters. The first set of parameters are influence when a circuit trips. So the parameter, and these are kind of like standard parameters which are used in uh, a bunch of uh, other frameworks as well. So first thing you're gonna be looking at is the last N requests to consider 
for a decision, right? Like I said, when something fails, you don't say immediately, okay, I'm calling it quits. You're gonna be like, okay, this is a failure. Let me look at the last five requests and see how many of those failed. If you get a successful response, you're not gonna do any of that. Life is good. But when a failure response comes, you're gonna be like, okay, is this the first time it's failed? Let me look at the last five requests, right? So that's the end here. You're gonna be looking at the last end requests in order to make a decision. That's the scope of what you're gonna be looking at. You're not gonna be looking at a single request per se because that's not very informative. Last end request, next parameter. How many of those last end requests are failing? So let's say you're looking at the last five requests. If two of those five requests fail, do I break the circuit? If three of those five requests fail, do I break the circuit? So this is a parameter that you need to set when you configure your circuit breaker, right? We're gonna be doing that in the code later, but I want you to understand that this is the, this is, these are the parameters that you can control and you should be controlling because this is the only way you can get a proper logic for breaking the circuit, all right? This is, uh, this is the second parameter. The third parameter is the timeout duration itself. At what point of time do you consider that something has failed, that something is a timeout, right? So do you wait for two seconds for something to fail and then mark it as a failure or do you wait for three seconds? That's timeout. It's similar to what we did with the REST template. You remember we did a generic REST template timeout implementation, which has nothing to do with circuit breakers. It was like just timing out all the time. But with circuit breakers, it's like, what if a request takes five seconds? You're not gonna be waiting forever. You have to mark it as a failure and consider it for this logic that we've been talking about. At what point of time do you mark it as a failure? This is a timeout duration. You say, mark it as a failure after three seconds. So three seconds is a timeout, which the circuit breaker is gonna use both to time out a request and to consider that request as a failure so that it's informed about when to break the circuit, when it eventually has to make that decision. All right, these are the three parameters. There are a bunch more, but these are like the important ones. Next, the important parameter that you wouldn't think about, but it's, it's obvious why it is important. When does a circuit get back to normal? Uh, I have called it as untrip, but I know that that's not a word. When does the opposite of a trip happen, right? When a circuit trips is those three parameters, when does the circuit get back to normal, right? For that, the parameter that people usually use is how long to wait before the circuit breaker tries again, right? One thing that we've learned is that when something is bad with a microservice, the worst thing you can do is send more requests that's fail because what is bad is gonna get worse. So you wanna wait, you wanna give it some time. So when the circuit breaks, when does the circuit breaker send requests again? When does the circuit breaker look again? It's like, okay, are you okay now, right? So it has to give it a certain time. So that's this timeout. This is the time for how long the circuit breaker waits before trying again to see if that failing microservice is okay. All right, so I'm gonna give a couple of examples to show you how these parameters are going to look. These are not parameters that you would wanna set in a production application. These are very, very bad choices for an application in production. But I have set these as parameters because um, kind of it, it's an aid for me to help explain this concept to you. I'm gonna take an example and explain this concept to you. All right, let's say these are the parameters. Last end request to consider. I say, look at the last five requests. Okay, I'm gonna look at the last five requests. How many of those five requests should fail? This is the next obvious question, right? I'm gonna say, okay, wait for three of those last five requests to fail. If less than three have failed for the last five times, it's okay, keep sending the request. But if three fail, that's when you break the circuit. The circuit breaker says, okay, I'm gonna do that. Now, what do you define as failure? At some point of time, I'm gonna time out the request. Do I do it after one second? Do I do it after two seconds? Do I do it after three seconds? I'm gonna say, okay, do it after two seconds. If a request is taking more than two seconds, mark it as a failure. And then the final thing it's gonna ask is, how long do I have to wait before I try to send requests to that failing microservice again? And that's another configuration. You say, okay, wait for 10 seconds. When the circuit breaks, wait for 10 seconds and then try to send something again. All right. Now let's look at an example scenario where these configurations play out in, um, in a bunch of requests, right? So let's say these are the requests to a microservice. First request takes 100 milliseconds, super fast. Within the timeout, 
the circuit breaker says, okay, this is a success. Second one takes three seconds. Well, it is beyond the two second duration. So it doesn't wait for three seconds. When the two second duration happens, it times out, marks it as a failure, right? Next request takes 300 milliseconds. This is good, this is green. Next, three seconds. Again, times out at two seconds. Next one might have taken four seconds. Again, it times out at two seconds. Now notice what happens. When it gets to this point, when it gets to this point, the circuit breaker says, oh, I need to trip the circuit now. Why? Because again, look at this. It's looking at the last five requests. These are the five requests right here. How many of them should fail? Three of them should fail. Has three of them failed? Yes, you have three failures. So what is it gonna do? It's gonna say, I'm not gonna send requests anymore. I'm going to sleep. It's gonna sleep for 10 seconds. It's not literally gonna sleep. It's gonna hold off on sending requests to that particular microservice for the sleep window of 10 seconds. And uh, it is not going to send a request to that thing from then on. It's important to note because suppose a request was sent, right? During the sleep window, suppose a request was sent and it would have taken 200 milliseconds. You're gonna miss it, which is fine because you want the circuit to break at this point because you don't have a reliable guarantee that that would have taken 200 milliseconds. That might have taken five seconds. It might have resulted in another failure, right? So at a certain point of time, you're gonna say, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to break the circuit. Now, how do you get to that information? How do you get and say, okay, I want these many requests to fail before I break the circuit? It's a very tricky number to get to. Most of the times it depends on two main factors. It depends on how many requests are coming in, how frequently requests are coming in, and how big is your threat pool, right? Based on that, you have an idea of how much capacity your, uh, your application server can handle with the number of threads coming in, how many threads can wait, and then based on that, you can, uh, you can configure the, these values, but it is tricky. It's more of like a trial and error thing. You deploy something, see it working, see where things are failing, and then kind of tweak it along as you go and you do it on an ongoing basis.